Hello friends, it's Chrissy. Welcome to or back to my channel. I am thrilled to be here after an unintentional hiatus as a result of work getting a little a little bonkers and having a cat with a loose tooth. She's fine, she's perfect, but still stressful. And I'm making daily videos for uh, the Attuned Tarot School that I'm teaching, so that's kind of taking up my, my filming energy. But I'm back for today with my notes for the deck crush tag. I originally saw this on Marlena's channel, but Danny and uh, Lisa and uh, Don Michelle uh, were co-collaborators, co-creators on this tag, and I'm really excited to do it. There were lots of original prompts I've added one, two, three, four, five of my own. So I'm gonna try to um, I'm gonna try to move through this a little quicker than I usually do, knowing that that's still probably gonna be long-winded of me. So the first original prompt is the fling, uh, the deck where uh, that I had a short period of a wild time with, and that deck is the carnival at the end of the world. So this deck is one that um, I studied pretty intensely last fall, um, and I just wasn't prepared. This was not a fling because it didn't work out. This was a fling because it had more to teach me than I really had the bandwidth to learn at that time. Um, I thought this deck was going to be a um, intellectual study of the tarot and oh friends how wrong i was um this deck taught me so much about myself oh this nine of wands um until i honestly came to a point where i was like no more no thank you i this i got this five of wands like so often um yeah, the, the, this, this deck is, this deck was a fling, but I still have its number in my phone, right? Like it's, it's not going anywhere. I'm waiting for the right time to say, okay, now I think I'm ready for what it was you were trying to put down. So my time with this deck is not over. I can appreciate what we had for while we had it. And I know that it's, again, it's not over. We'll, there are additional <laughs> rendezvous in the future. So this is my fling deck, the carnival at the end of the world. Next, we have the, the puppy love deck, um, the deck that I was infatuated with, but had no long-term commitment. And the way that I kind of see the mesquite tarot <laughs> is I didn't, I thought I was going to really, to really bond with, to really enjoy my time with the guy, but it turns out I just love the sweatshirt that he left at my apartment. The, the, the guidebook for this deck is without question my favorite guidebook um, that I've ever come across. And because of that, and the fact that this, um, that this deck is out of print, I would feel really crappy releasing the deck and keeping the guidebook, so I keep them both. Um, but it reads, it has the title of the card, keywords, and then this beautiful poetry about the deck, or about the card, and then the reversal, or like the, the, the weakness, the neutral, and the strength for each card at the bottom. Um, let me rephrase that. The too little balanced too much. There we go. Um, and I, 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 I love the guidebook. I love the guidebook. But the deck itself was not for me. Um, one, it is, I have the mini. I think I, I bought this deck um, right at the end of its availability. The cards are just a little too small for me to shuffle comfortably. Um, I I have a hard time knowing with some of these if they're right side up or upside down. And that's 
that bothers me sometimes. Um, just, I feel like physically, um, it's a little harder for me to read. I, I don't have the connection with every card and say, oh, I know automatically what that is. Like the two of wands, is it this way? Or is it this way? Um, that, that, that is really a lot of my um, hold back with this deck. Again, I, I don't know that I will ever, now I'm putting it out, I'm like, this, this deck is just beautiful. I don't think I will ever get rid of it. Um, like I said, mainly because I love the guidebook so much and I feel like they belong together, but I kind of just keep, I just kind of keep the guy around because I love the sweatshirt that he left so much and I don't want him to take it back. <laughs> so my puppy love deck is the Mesquite Tarot. And I don't know how you all just like lay all the cards out and then just stack them back up in a in a nice neat manner because that's just not that's not what I'm doing here today. Next we have the Friends with Benefits prompt and I am choosing the Pensive Path Tarot for this. So uh, they identify the Friends with Benefits as the deck you care about, but sometimes get really passionate for. And I feel like this is a deck that knows its role in my life and is completely comfortable being that. So I think of like the Friends with Benefits as we know where we stand, we know what to expect, and we don't expect anything different, and we're all happy with that arrangement. And this deck, this deck is here for me when I want to go out for a nice dinner and discuss all of the tea, have lots and lots of snark, and spend that time together with no, with no consequence, with no need to, I'm going to act on this in any way, or I'm going to, um, this is, this is a deck that lets me rant and then lets me, um, <laughs> it knows what it's for. <laughs> we know what we we know our relationship. We don't expect anything more. And this deck lets me have my release of snark and um and and inner gossip. I just love it. It doesn't get jealous. It allows me it both challenges and validates me. And it's always here. It's always here, but it's not bothered if I don't call it <laughs> every day. <laughs> and this, my friends, is my Friends with Benefits deck, The Pensive Path. Next, we have Love at First Sight. And I know that feels like every deck <laughs> that I introduce you all to, but I feel like the Depths Tarot is the most recent um, my most recent just absolute smitten at first sight deck. And that is, that is the truth. Um, this deck, I'm pretty sure it was Jonicky who, who pointed me in its direction and was like, what is this beautiful thing? And I'm like, I, I will find out for us. And it is, it it took it it, it 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 I don't know. I don't have words for it. Um I mentioned this in my original walkthrough video. It feels like a more grounded version of um the soulscape soul space oracle but in tarot form. The colors are so earthy. Um, the art is both so, so free form and free flow, but also so intentional. Um, 
I don't, I, I don't have words for this deck. And this is not the only deck I'm going to feel this way about. But this, I, I, when I, when I ordered it, I thought, oh, this has potential. And when I opened it, I was like, bury me with it. This, this Ten of Swords. I don't have words. It just, it owns my heart. I don't have words. But it owns me. And that is mm, the Death's Tarot. Next, we have the One Night Stand. The deck I tried out, moved on, but I still think about. And um, this was this was a this was actually the deck that um, I had the most immediate response to that I knew I had to do um, the tag. And this is the Lilifer. I don't get it. I don't get it. Um, there are number representations that aren't the actual number. Like the five looks like the four. I am not currently into all of the astrological stuff. Um, I don't, I don't understand it. Like this is one, two, three, four, five. This is the five of wands, but the representation that she chose for a five looks like a four. That's upside down lowercase h thing. I don't know. Um, yeah, we had we had a wild time. We had a, we had a wild trip to North Carolina, <laughs> and then I decided I am not ready for this yet. Kind of like the carnival at the end of the world. Um, I'm not getting rid of it. I'm just it has it has a deeper it has deeper study requirements than I am ready to make at this point. So, um, my one night stand is the Lilifer. Now, this may be um, the most just blatant, clear, clear reason for a choice. This is my we were on a break deck. A deck we're separated from for any reason, but we'll come back. And this is this one is very logistical. This is the Terra Volatile. <laughs> this is the Terra Volatile as a deck. And this is the bonus cards and the expansion pack. As you can tell, they are almost equal in size. And the reason we are on a break is because the original guidebook only discusses the, and also it's a, it's a PDF guidebook. It's not a physical guidebook yet. Um, the original guidebook just covers um, the original 78 and maybe the suit of vessels. Mm. I'm not sure where it is, so I can't tell you. I've printed it off somewhere. Um, <laughs> but the original guidebook, the guidebook that we currently have access to, does not go through, does not give, uh, does, doesn't cover the alternate cards, um, the expansion pack, etc. So, um, like, I, th this frustrates me because I know this deck has, um, has symbology that I, that, that I want to go deeper in that I don't have access to. I don't have intellectual access to, um, to, to the meaning behind the symbols. And that's, I guess I could be showing you this, right? <laughs> And that bugs me. This is this is the expansion pack or cards that I didn't choose. Um, I just, I want more information. And until I have the more information, it feels like I'm doing something wrong. Um, and not that I have an issue trusting my intuition, because there are definitely some cards that I go my own way with. I just know there's more to be known, and I want to know it. So, I mean, look at this High Priestess. <laughs> Look at this magician. Um, yeah, I just want to know more. And until I can, I'm choosing to um, to put it on the back burner. I am on the wait list for the printed guidebook, um, which is in production, I guess, I hope. Um, and I have a feeling that when that makes its way into... 
goodness, that's beautiful. When the guidebook for the entire deck, including the expansion, makes its way into my grubby little hands, like I'm going to be all about it. I know this. I am going to be all about it. So um, this deck is content to sit in the we are on a break category until I have everything that I need to really do the deep dive. So my we were on a break deck is the Terra Volatile. The next prompt in the original tag is the Married Material, the deck that has proven its value in my collection, and that is um, the Death Doula. When I think about this deck being marriage material, part of that is my how I value my friends. This is the only oracle in, in my collection that I'm presenting today. Um, I think about how uh, it is important to me that the partner that I choose, my marriage material, um, has can blend in with my friend group. <laughs> and, and I thought it was fitting that I chose an oracle here for my marriage material because, it's, because this deck gets along with huh, every tarot deck I've tried it with. Um, I know Project Refined Life really loves it with uh, with the Somnia Tarot, which I'm not talking about today, and that makes me kind of sad. Um, but but this deck goes shockingly well with the Depths Tarot. It goes well with my deck that I'm going to be showing next. Um, this deck is just it understands me and it challenges me. And it fits with everything that was in my life before it showed up. I never noticed like the, the pointing figure here in the Odyssey. So yeah, um, the Death Doula has proven itself in my collection. It's proven that it fits well with me and my life and my friends, my other decks. And here we are fully engaged. <laughs> My marriage material deck is the Death Doula Oracle. The last deck in the original tag is the Happily Ever After, the deck that um, I'll spend forever with. And um, I'm glad that I saw Danny Mystic do this because I don't feel bad about it. Of course, the deck that I have chosen to spend forever with is the deck that I created. This is the Narrative Alchemy or the Narrative Alchemy Tarot. And I think part of that happily ever, happily ever after piece is having a voice, having a partner that you know well and that knows you. And that is how this deck feels to me. Um, because it's mine, <laughs> because it's my handwriting, because the guidebook is literally in my voice. We're getting all upper level chakras here. Um, this deck and I just want to say it absolutely floors me and like it brings me to tears every time I see one of you talk about or use this deck. This is this is my heart on 78 pieces of cards. And I feel like this is what this is what partnership feels like. This is what open communication but willingness to challenge. This is um this is a partnership with myself that I was not expecting when I created this deck. So um, yeah, my Happily Ever After is my deck. Hmm. The Narrative Alchemy Tarot. Now, because I can't leave stuff alone, <laughs> I have created a few of my own categories. And the first is the fallback. 
the deck that is always there that um, if we're not married by the time we're 45, <laughs> we'll end up together. <laughs> um, this is the one that is always there and expects nothing from me. And that is the Guided Hand Tarot. I don't like that card and somehow it's always on top. Um, this, the, so yeah, we, we met on a whim. I was not looking for this deck. I didn't know it existed. I was in a um, an art shop, um, like a local artist, really cool shop in uh, Louisville. And this deck was on the shelf. It was a local artist. I brought it home and I was like, holy cow, this deck is great. And then over the course of the next six months or so, I saw it start popping up on tarot tube, but I had not seen it. Um, I didn't know of it before I bought it. Um, it was honestly a, I'm supporting a local artist. So here we go. And I love it. It's, um, in that, um, it's my fallback. If nothing else feels comfortable, if nothing else, if other things, if other decks feel like too much or too little, I always know that the guided hand is going to feel just right. This was a deck that I worked with during the, um, during uh, my most, most recent round of tarot school. So I know this deck, like I have, I have the imagery down. I know what each card means to me as it's tarot correspondence as I, and like to my intuition. We know each other very well. It expects nothing of me. And when nothing else seems quite right, it's always there. So this is my fallback deck. <laughs> and this is the guided hand tarot. All right, we have three left. So the next Christy original, I'm very entertained by this one. I'll just, I'm just gonna be completely honest. This is the Jordan Catalano, the dark, unattainable, brooding deck. <laughs> the deck that I don't understand, but I could watch it lean all day. The deck I can't walk away from even though I don't speak its language, and that is the Tarot of the Drowning World. This is Jordan Catalano. If you know, you know. If not, go watch my so-called life. It's like 10 episodes. It's not a ton of commitment. Claire Danes is just absolutely phenomenal. Like I'm in high school and I pass, I pass this figure in the hallway. I don't know who she is, but I want to know more about her. But I know that I can't, I know I don't have the capacity to fully understand everything she has to tell me right now. And I think part of, part of the, the Jordan Catalano-ish-esque-ness of this deck is the fact that I don't know that it fully understands its own mystery either right? Like the guidebook doesn't say we chose these squashes and these zucchinis because of this and the blossoms are here instead of there. Um, I don't know that there's any discussion about why the, why the lamb is slain on the four of swords. Um, I don't know if the deck fully gets itself either. Like why, why do we have, why do we have skulls in the three of swords okay i'm not some of these I'm, i like i asked these questions i'm like okay wait i kind of know that on this one um <laughs> but i think there is this i think this deck has sort of the attitude of not fully understanding itself either and being something that we develop that we define together i just hope that my best friend doesn't come along and I'm not going to ruin things for you. I almost gave a big spoiler in case you haven't seen my so-called life and I'm not going to do that. This is, this is, this is my Jordan Catalano deck. This is the Terra with the drowning world. My next Chrissy specific category is another one that entertains the hell out of me that may not matter to you at all, but this is my Derek Shepard. This is the deck that I brought home because it was pretty and it had great hair, and then I ended up falling in love with it. 
<laughs> that deck is the Pagan Otherworlds. So when I bought this deck, I sincerely bought it to have in my collection. Um, I've had it for a while. It was one of my first indie deck purchases. And honestly, I bought it because everybody had it. I'm not gonna lie. Um, this was during that phase when I thought that if I was going to be a serious, uh, academic, whatever, tarot reader, this was a deck that I needed to know and understand. And I honestly bought this deck thinking, I will have it in my collection, I will study it, but I will never read with it. That was fully, that, and see, here's one of the good hair cards. Um, I brought it home because it was pretty and because it had good hair, just like Derek Shepard. And then, and then it proved itself to me. And then it showed me that it cared for me. And it showed me that it had things to teach me. And it showed me that it was safe to love. I need to find, speaking of good hair, I need to find, so this King of Cups reminds me of my husband, Ginger, good hair. The Queen of, is it Queen of Pentacles? Oh, it's Justice. I'm sorry. Justice reminds me of my friend Allison. Again, Ginger with good hair. Um, this this is my Derek Shepard deck. I didn't expect to fall in love. And sometimes when I see it, another good hair card, um, it makes me a little nervous. <laughs> <laughs> because I have such strong feelings for it. And I'm not always sure that I'm worthy of the commitment. <laughs> so the Pagan Otherworlds is my Derek Shepard deck. And then finally, if you'll indulge me a little bit, this is my Nathan Bentley deck. And Nathan Bentley is my husband. And while I show you the cards, I'm going to tell you a little bit of our love story. So <laughs> the Rider Waite Centennial is my Nathan Bentley deck. This is a deck that I have known that I knew forever. And then one day we looked at each other differently and everything changed. The connection was not immediate. It was a very long, very clueless bubbling. So yeah, you've seen this deck. So Ton, so I'll just lay it out as I talk. So a little bit about me and my husband. Um, I met my husband in seventh grade. We went to rival middle schools. Um, he actually went to church with um, with my middle school with one of my middle school boyfriends, and I met him at youth group. I did not like my husband right away. Um, he ended up being my rival in. <laughs> I'm such a nerd in middle school academic team. I just wanted to beat the redheaded boy from Mikkel in language arts and it never happened. Um, we became good friends like sophomore year in high school. Um, we kept in touch quite a bit during college and we started dating mm, between junior and senior year of college. Our story that I love is um, we went to a Dave Matthews Band concert and he brought a girl and I didn't like it. And I'm like, what is this? Why does it bother me that that my husband has brought a girl? Um, it took me six months to gather, to gather my, my wits to say, I think maybe we should see each other. And then he was like, okay. Um, which if you know my husband is like, course that makes perfect sense um but yeah and and then from there from there it was like I knew um and in the same way this deck was one of the first that I purchased in 2017 maybe and I don't know that we fully got to know each other until last year until like 2021 so this deck was, this is my, the Rider Waite Smith Centennial is my Nathan Bentley deck, is my unexpected, 
slow burn life partner. <laughs> My unexpected, always there, slow burn life partner, the Nathan Bentley. <laughs> Thank you all so much for hanging out with me with this deck crush tag. It was so fun. I had a really good time. And um, I hope you did too. And I hope um, this has, this is bringing us into deeper connection with our decks and what we love and why we love it. And um, I love that we're sharing stories with each other as well. So thank you for spending this time with me. Happy February and I'll see you soon.